hey hey insight number four uh yes this is mole removal don't panic i'm not suddenly a peer actor or anything um this is supposed to look like this can't do anything about it all right so chapter 26 this is Isaac going back to Abraham's wells and digging them all out because the Philistines had filled them all in going like, well, there's an insult that goes around. I explained this to my husband. There's an insult that goes around, maybe not so much these days, but back in the day. Um, we Someone did something really dumb and stupid. You'd say, call them a Philistine. Um, because they were like brawny, battly guys. They weren't smart. They were just, you know, big and did stuff that sort of spur of the moment they thought was good like we want to um annoy Abraham and have him not around here because we don't like him so we're going to fill in all his wells therefore he's got no water here um dumb thing to do because then they also have no water there right um so that's where the insult oh you're a Philistine like you're a caveman you're just bleh, right um, and we shouldn't insult people like that because we don't know their whole story, so don't do that. But that's where that comes from. But the Philistines had filled in the wells, and Isaac now is thinking, okay, let's go back to these wells and dig them out. Um, Isaac's promised posterity, um, and yeah, so he takes his servants and goes and digs out all these wells. Um, so this is before the birthright incident blessing happened. So Isaac's still young enough to do this, all right? So we're kind of jumping around. Just keep in mind that we're not in chronological order completely with the story here. Okay, so he started digging the wells. We're just going to go to 18 and 19 because there's a few wells that he, he digs up again, like digs the dirt out of them because there's water there underneath. He's just got to find it again. Um, and Isaac digged again the wells of water which they had digged in the days of Abraham his father for the Philistines had stopped them after the death of Abraham and he called their names after the names by which his father had called them and Isaac's servants digged in the valley and they found there a well of springing water springing water is living water which means it's flowing it's clean it's pure it's like having you know, glacier, mountain water bottled off the Swiss Alps, handed to you by some really, you know, nice smelling looking person. It's, it's the best, right? Okay, like the fancy, fancy stuff. The stuff we all roll our eyes at when people are drinking, you know. But that's what it is. It's living water. It's the best water you can come across. Um, it has no impurities. It's really good for you. So it's not just a well of pond water, it's not just a grotty stream, it's not just a make do. No, this is the best water because it is flowing and it's self-cleaning. Um, so, there's some lessons to be learned here. Now there's a lot of wells they dig up. And go look at John 4, yeah, John 14 to 15. Let's have a look here, I have marked it here. John 14 to 15. Now this is the woman in Samaria that we commonly know as the story of the woman at the well where Jesus first introduced himself as Christ. Now this is given from 10 to 15, um, where he talks about, you know, living water. Um, yeah, let's just read it. It says, Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldst have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. Talking about himself. The woman saith unto him, Sir, because she doesn't know who he is. Um, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? Like, how are you going to give me a drink of living water? You don't even have a bucket to, like, get water from this well, right? Of living water. Is it the same well? Huh. Um, art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well, and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle? Same well. Hmm. Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. Meaning the water in the well. You drink of that, you temporarily quench your thirst, but you're going to want more. You're going to need more. And he says, But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. The woman saith unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. So she desired that. She wanted that. Um, now there's more to that story. I'm just going to 
point out that little bit, same well, and then he introduces himself as Christ, because she had heard that there was this Christ that was coming, she had known of it, and so she was really excited, but this is the first time he actually says, I am the Messiah, I am the promised Christ, so it's kind of cool to think that, might not be exactly the same well, but it was those wells that they were digging out here that we read about that is that well that Jesus met the woman in Samaria at. Cool, right? Join up some dots there, maybe? Um, so, yeah. And there's, there's a lot of them there. So what do we learn about that? Well, for one thing, Isaac goes back to the goodness of his father. He knew there was good there, so he went back to find that. Um... Yeah, many lessons. Let's focus on two. The first one, Isaac went to the goodness and resources he knew about. He went back to his father's already established nourishment. Um, remember we talked last week about the good of the past? Take the good of the past and use it for the future. So that's what he's doing. He's going back, taking the good of the past, the wells, the living water, the good water, going back to what he knew, what his dad taught him was good. And using it in the future. And then second, we go to John and we read about the well again. We learn about Christ being living water. Um, and living water, like eternal living water. So that you partake of the water he gives you. And you don't thirst for that. You know, not knowing who you are. Or not being enough. If you drink enough of his water, then you're going to feel you are enough. And you're going to know who you are. You belong to him. You're his. So when someone says to you, what house are you from? Who's to, you know, who are you associated with? You're like, Jesus. I'm from the house of Jesus. I'm from the house of Christ. Come on in. You're welcome here. Um, yeah. So, And also, what are you pulling from the well lately? Are you thirsty? Partake of living water. Yeah. And how do we do that? Through gaining a relationship with Christ. Through prayer. Through scripture study. Through doing come follow me. Through taking the sacrament. All those simple little things again. The daily little worships that people discount and look for something bigger. No, it's those daily little things that will give you that relationship with Christ. That will give you that living water that you are thirsting for. That's how you do it. Um, Elder David A. Bedner, he said, Spiritual thirst is a need for living water. A constant flow is far superior to sporadic sipping. So he's saying there, having that constant flow, rather than just partaking like on a Sunday, or on Easter and Christmas, or you do come follow me only when you're at your parents' house, or whatever it is. Um, or you do come follow me only when they remind you again at church, and you think, oh yeah, we've got to get back to it. No, it's, it's the... Yeah, all those things are great efforts. And if you're making an effort and it's a sincere effort, great. But keep at it. Um, my reading of the Book of Mormon, I've missed many days this week and I've got to get back to it. So it's better for me when there is that every day. Um, yeah, that constant flow. That every day constant flow. Not just sporadic sips here and there. Not just, uh, you know, you think of liken it to actual thirst. You can't just drink enough for the week in one day. No, you need to drink enough for the day throughout the day. That's how it works. So it's the same with our relationship with Christ. We need an, we need more of him throughout the day, every day, to have that relationship, to bring us that um, quench of that, you know, that living water um, that we need. So yeah, that's why we're taught about wells. That's why it's brought up, because it links back in with Christ many thousand years later. Awesome, right? Okay. Hang around for the fifth one, it's going to be good.